pleased to see everybody here and to think of the second week of Albany turning out for basic civil rights for people right here in downtown Albany. So a huge, huge shout out to Albany. Also, it's very easy right now, especially after a week like this one, to look around the world and feel hopeless and helpless and like there's absolutely nothing that we can do to turn the tide. And this right here is an example of how that's not true. Derek, who put this together for us, cared about this issue. He looked around and he just told me that he saw that there was nothing anywhere near Albany. So he put it together. He saw a need, he filled it, and we're all here because everyone here wants to speak out against this injustice. So thank you, Derek. <laughs> right now with these children and families is unthinkable in this country or in any other. To imagine a two-year-old not knowing where her mother is. To imagine an eight-year-old unable to find out even what state or country his father is in. To have this idea that by ripping apart families, mothers will stop taking this difficult journey to save their children's lives is wrong. I just came back from Aspen, Colorado. I was at a, a place called the Aspen Ideas Festival. And I had the opportunity to speak with a woman that has been sitting on the border recently, working directly with these children and families. And what she told me was alarming. She talked about this as incompetence piled on top of cruelty. There is no plan. There is no receipt. You get a receipt for your jacket when you are taken by ICE. You do not get a receipt for your child, your mother, or your father. How we reunite these people, we do not know. And what's very alarming is with the President's executive order the other week, we're going to be building the United States, and I say we because this is our country. These are things that are happening in our name, and that's why we're all here to say that it's not okay with us. But as we build these internment camps on military bases, we all have to recognize what that means. Once those families go onto the military bases, Nobody has access to them anymore. It's hidden. We can no longer see them. And for all of the conversation about American Airlines and United Airlines not transporting the kids, at least then we know where they are and that they're moving. Once they go onto the military bases, it's military transport. It's secret. Our government will then be able to move these children and families any place without any of us knowing or knowing how or why. And that's why it's really important when we're speaking out about these things, we think about the impact on the kids and the families. We want to keep them in the states. We want for states to have access to them. The governor and I right now are looking at how do our licensing authorities in the state of Oregon allow us to touch and monitor the seven children that we have today. Today we have seven that have been separated at the border and a bunch of kids that are unaccompanied minors. But how do we make sure that our child protection laws apply to those children? We are working nationwide with other legislators to look at how do we take care of these babies in the tender shelters to make sure that they are not adopted out to other families, having no idea that they are adopting these children that have not been freely given. So we have to look at that at the state level. What is it that we can do? And every day we have to stand up and say that this is wrong that this story is not over. We have to think about the babies. My son talked today about the baby jails. Babies need mothers. They don't need jails. Toddlers need parks. They don't need jails. Seven-year-olds need elementary schools. They don't need jails. We need families to be together. <laughs> so everybody in Albany can hear us and our voices can join. Sam and I were listening on the way here to the rallies across the country. We're joining with thousands of people across the country protesting this very un-American injustice. But one of the things that you can do, in addition to tweeting, Facebooking, telling your friends, talking about this all the time so we do not get tired of this story, you have to keep promoting it and talking about it. But if you have a little bit of extra money to spare, RACES, which is an organization in Texas, uh, the ACLU, uh, Disability Rights Texas, which is going in to make sure that we're not putting psychotropic drugs into these children. 
these organizations are very important to get advocates and attorneys to these children and these families to help them get back together. So you can go online to find those. It's very worthwhile and getting legal counsel to these kids and parents makes a big difference. Now we all saw the jacket, right? The, the jacket. And I know that you're all here because we care. So let's make sure everybody can hear us. So I'm going to ask you, do we care? And you're going to say, yes, we care. Yes. Got it? Yes. All right, ready? Do we care? Yes, we care. Do we care? Yes, we care. Do we care? Yes, we care. And how about this? Families belong together. 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 Don't stop saying that. Every minute, every day, everyone you know, the story is not over until every single one of those children is back with their mothers and their fathers. We have to think about these children as if they are our own children because they are. And we have to think about these mothers as though they're our sisters and our mothers and our cousins because they are. And we have to think about these fathers as if they're our fathers and our brothers and our uncles and our cousins because they are. These are family, these are people, these are people that have come here to claim a better promise and a better life. Let's make sure that our country, our values show what, what we were founded on and not let this revolution take place that destroys everything that we hold dear. So one more time, do you care? Yes, we care.